I had a good day today. I uh, went over my daily profit goal, so that's always great. And today I gave myself um, kind of a raise in a way that the cool thing about day trading is you don't have a boss, but and and so you're in total control over your raises. And the way you do that is you increase your share size, but there is risk in that uh, emotionally and psychologically it can be very difficult when you increase your share size because all the numbers change, your risk changes, everything like that. And so what I've been doing for a while now is every few weeks, um, if I have really good two really good weeks in a row, I've been increasing my share size by about 20%. This time I only did 10%, but um, anyway, today was the first day on my new share size. And um, so I was trading that way and I'm just glad that it went well. Um, I traded, or my watch list today is JD, SRNE, OSTK, and Gold. So JD, um, this pharmaceutical company that's been hot for a little while, OSTK, which is Overstock.com, and Barrett Gold. And my first trade was on SRNE, and this is it right here. So you can see my pattern here formed um, pretty much my my standard pattern here. So I took it short. Now I didn't scale out as quickly as I normally would have because the on the level two, there was this, there are huge bids at the $10 mark. And it made me incredibly confident that, that, it, that it was gonna make it down here to $10, which is also a level on the daily. But uh, it did not make it. So I only got two scale outs, um, two scale outs before I got out at break even. And the, the, the frustrating part about this was um, just that I was almost too patient. And level two is a great indicator, but this is a perfect example of just because it's a good indicator, it doesn't mean um, that these things are for sure gonna happen, but it gives you some idea of what might happen. So this was a winning trade for me, but it could have been more profitable. Usually with it stutter stepping like this and the volume change, if not for this level two, I would have probably taken another partial down here and made it even more profitable, but um, again, really happy with that trade. Started my day out pretty solid. Um, my next trade was on uh, gold. So gold is Barrett Gold, and it's interesting because I actually have uh, calls on call contracts on gold. So long, longer term or medium term, I want it to go up. But today, I actually shorted it on two occasions. And well, actually, I took it long first. So my first one was a long. This is actually a bad trade. Um, uh, you know, I know what I saw. I saw that it went up. It came back down, got near VWAP through a doji. And uh, the bearish volume was much weaker than the bullish volume previously. So I thought it might be a long. What I, I don't mind thinking it's a long here. I see why I thought that, especially, you know, with this nice bullish volume following the bearish volume. But um, this entry is in no man's land. Really, if I wanted to take this long, I needed to take it here at 29.89. And this is a pre-market level. And that's really the entry. But to get it at, I think, like 29.98 or whatever my entry was, it just was a little bit um, too far away. It was no man's land. So as soon as it lost this uh, pre-market level, I got out. So not a great entry there. So that was a losing trade for me. But then I kept watching it. And, you know, I took it long. It seemed like a short. So I kept watching it and looked for confirmation that it was a short. And this huge volume here that pushed it through VWAP and everything was, for me, kind of confirmation that it was going to make it. Then it followed up with much weaker bullish volume and seemed to hang out below this. So I wanted it to get below this 100 MA. And I did. And I took it short just above VWAP. So this was the confirmation I needed to take it short. And uh, I partialed out towards 29.50, as you see here. Boom, boom, boom. Got a bunch of partials here. This is the 200 MA on the 1 and the 50 MA on the 5-minute chart. So it looked like it was going to be a pretty good magnet to pull this stock down. And then uh, if you see on the 1-minute chart, it kind of hung around for a while. So, so um, it popped back up and then started coming back down. I thought maybe it was going to keep going maybe towards the $29 mark um, or this uh, this pre-market level down here. But So I went ahead and added to my position. I doubled my remaining position, which wasn't very large at that point, and it didn't work out. It went against me. So this is a nice profitable trade, but this ad did not work out. Um, I think if I wanted to add to this position, it really should have happened at this 29.60 level. And I kind of felt like I should add that point, 
but I hesitated and then it moved down. And then once it got below this moving average here, I decided to go for it again because it did break the 2950 mark. And I thought, well, people saw that it broke and now the move's gonna happen. But this is a bit of a hesitation, not the best ad, but still a really good trade for me. Uh, my last trade was my best trade. And this is very unconventional for me as of late. I haven't done a, a double top trade in a while, but this is what I saw. I, you can see, so double tops and double bottoms are, are where the stock gets to a certain price on two separate occasions and can't really break through. So usually though, so this is the level and you'll see uh, it actually did break through. It went a little higher. Um, so this is not a perfect double top, but it was convincing enough for me because the volume had gotten bearish for a little while. And then once it broke through, the fact that it really didn't have much momentum further made it seem like it might be a good short. So I took it short um, right around the $65 mark, which is at this 100 MA on the one minute. And I was pretty nervous. So I don't take this pattern that often. And because of that, I was a little nervous. And there is, uh, on the one minute chart, it's not showing it here, but earlier it was showing it. The point of control, meaning there's a the point where there's a lot of volume was right around the top of this wick. And so if it broke through that, I was going to stop out. Luckily it didn't, it got right up on it, but didn't break through. And uh, I parceled quickly because again, this isn't a pattern I trade that often. And so I didn't have the same edge. I didn't feel as confident in my ability to read it as I normally do. So I took partials relatively quickly. Parceled out towards the 200 MA on the um, 200 MA, the 50 MA and the VWAP were all kind of in this same little area. So I parceled out towards that. Um, this doji kind of made me think it was going to come back on me. So I went ahead and got out a little bit more there. And then it turns out it still had uh, some downward momentum left. So once it dipped back below this 200 MA, I went ahead and doubled my remaining position for, in the hope it would get to 64. It did get to 64 and I got all out right there. So this ad was a really great, really successful ad for me. I'm very proud of that. Now, um, Today was a great day. I did get to my profit target, but I should have had more patience actually. So 64, instead of going all out, I should have taken half my position and continued to watch it because it was pretty clear that it was weak at this point. And I could have gotten a lot more out of it, but I did get a dollar out of the trade. So I'm not gonna complain about that, but I could have been more patient. And uh, as I said, today was a good day. I increased my share size, so I'm glad it panned out, but um, I was kind of mentally exhausted after this point because it's felt like a more difficult day than usual. And I think that's probably what led me to go all out here, but could have shown more patience, but happy with the day.